So, let's talk about the world's simplest OD, which you just saw in your quiz. So maybe it's not the simplest OD, because I could have made it first order, but second order is a little bit more interesting. And what I think is particularly interesting is that even though it is one of the simplest ODs you can think of, there is still something to say about it. And that's a fascinating thing about math, that the simpler the example gets, sometimes the more you can say about it. And sometimes the more difficult it is to solve, and the more difficult it is to recognize as something that you already know. So I think most of you did it correctly anyway, but I'm not sure if you used uh, not the right kind of thinking, but I'm not sure that you saw that what we've discussed until now actually applies. That this satisfies the pattern of what we've talked about so far. So there are two ways to solve this uh, extraordinary equation. One is to speak your way through it, where I ask for a function whose second derivative is zero. Well, then its first derivative must be a constant. So the function itself must be a linear function. So we're looking at Okay, so that's obviously one way to do it. But another way to do it is to do it the way we would have done it if it was a more complicated second order linear ordinary differential equation with constant coefficients, which is to write down the characteristic polynomial, solve it, and depending on how the roots work out, do what you're supposed to do. So let's see how that works out. So what's the corresponding equation? Lambda squared, I'm sorry, you guys get the chance to say it? That's right. Lambda squared equals zero. What are the two roots of this equation? Zero, zero. No, it's n times zero, and it's any positive number. I'm going to write zero and zero. It's a bit interesting. Zero. And zero. Two roots. So what situation are we in? Distinct roots, pure imaginary roots, complex roots, or repeated roots? Repeated roots. When we have repeated roots, we know exactly what to do. So let's do exactly what we're supposed to do. U of t equals c1 times something plus c2 times something else. So it's clearly e to 0 t and then you cannot repeat e to 0 t again because it would be a linearly dependent function. It would not be a linearly independent member, member of the null space. So you have to do what we learned last time, t times e to 0 t. And there you go. This is e to 0 t is 1. So we just have c1 plus c2 t. So yes, all possible linear functions. Just like you would have guessed if you, do, if you solve this problem by speaking as opposed to following our recipe. Isn't it refreshing to be able to see that, that this is a special case of a sum of exponents and the whole business with repeated roots? I actually think it's very nice. So that was kind of the whole point, to try to uh, throw you with, by making a problem much simpler. That's basically what I do on all of my tests. Because like nothing else, that's what tests understanding, the really simple problems. Okay, so this completes part one. <laughs>